Hello everyone. Um, let's try for pattern-collections.com and look at the new pattern. If you scroll down, you find some all sorts of interesting things. Look at that. There's the a, a highlighted or featured item today. Somebody tangled a Disney character. Isn't that awesome? So you can take your um, tangle patterns and find a coloring page and fill them in there. That is so much fun. Really is. I kind of have stopped doing that, but I have done a lot of that um, in the past. Uh, I got my um, templates from Ornation Creation. So if you look that up on Facebook, um, there are free templates there uh, and all sorts of awesome stuff happening on that particular group. So pattern-collections.com, go to Pattern Focus. We're going to go to today's pattern, which is called Dragon Tail, done by Ina Sona Moser. And it's a Nautilus-like thing. Look at this. This is going to be fun to try might be a little bit of a challenge. It might be um, something that we might, I might consider a more uh, advanced pattern, but maybe not. We'll, you know, just have to try it and see. Pardon me. I had to take a drink. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is a spiral. Second thing we're going to do is make some uh, curved sections within that spiral. And go all the way around until you get to the bit to the middle. Okay. Then here's where it gets a little trickier. Then we're going to do another little curve going from here this way. To there. See see how it doesn't go to here. It kind of curves over this direction. And then the next step is you do it again. Okay. And then that's it. That's finished like that. And then you can embellish further by then taking that bit and filling in going the other way with some other uh, filler stripes so it looks like that. And then here is the a completed one. You'll note that on this one um, she actually went outside the, the square, right, with the spiral. So it goes way out here, right? And then she also did a double line, which I really like that look. And then here, there's this bit of, of dark... Uh, I really, some of these things, I, I'm really, and then these little, like, dragon scales. Oh, so pretty. Color, this one's just, this one's just so, oh, so, so pretty. So, where are we going to go? I don't really know yet. But I do know I have to turn on the light because I can't see without it. Hmm. Pardon me, I am still, it's been a couple of days and I'm still not quite right with my uh, sleep patterns and the time change. I am just still all goofed up. And so, today I'm determined to not go to bed too early stay up a little later, try to sleep in a little bit later. I 
my body still woke up too early. Give me a moment here. I need to do a bit of a border. And I think with my pencil, I'm going to work on my spiral so I have an idea of what I want it to do. And I like, I like that where it comes out off the page thing. So I'm going to actually kind of make my hand go like this. Ay, ay, ay. And it'll come out and around here and it'll come to here and maybe to here. Something like that. Okay. You might not even be able to see that. Can you, can you see it a little bit? But now I have a sort of a reference, a, a pencil guideline to help me uh, decide where my, my lines are going to go. I'm going to go, and I am actually going to make a nice big brush tip border. Don't always do that, but today it's, it's telling me a nice bold border is what it would like that and now I can do my drawing so I'm actually going to start here and it comes out there you don't see that and then it comes back in about here and then it runs outside the line there and it comes in here Like that. Yeah, I like that. Okay, now let me erase the bits that I don't want to have distracting me. And I do like on um, her sample tile with that double line, so I, I am going to do that. I really like that look. So yeah, I, I am just having a hard time adjusting to the time change. He would think after a couple of days that I would, I'd be back up to speed, but I don't know. Maybe it had to, something to do with the fact that it also coincided with some vacation days for me. And so I was out of my normal routine anyway. So that probably contributed to the the fact that I'm having a hard time getting this adjusted yeah okay so we're gonna make some curved you know I think I need to go further out. I'm going to start there, but I think I need to go nice curvy lines that just make a lovely curl. And of course, your spiral could go the other way. It doesn't have to go this way. This just seems to be the way uh, I drew it. And I'm just going to keep curving and curling. Um, when you get to this point, when you get to this point, this next line isn't going to go all the way over here. It's going to keep going to this spot there. Okay. as you come around here like that but it needs more this way right because that's not the first spot it actually feels like it the first spot should be over here 
I'm just going to keep doing a few of those like that. Yeah, like that. Okay. Now, the next step is to do, let me get my step out here. Uh, step number four. This is where it gets a little more complicated. Not a lot complicated, just a little bit more complicated. So this line here, I'm going to do it from here because these ones are partial and I want to do a full line. So it's going to go from here kind of over this way. Like that. will be if it goes all the way over there that's great if it doesn't quite make it there that's fine too I think but this is a bigger curve and I'm just trying to be kind of consistent with that swoopy shape I think we're good with that so these would be, you see parts of this, you won't see all of it, like so. So far so good. I knew this was going to be one I was going to really like. Okay, now I'll step Next step, step number five. Do this same movement again. I'm going to start with this one again. Let me go this way. Lovely crescent banana like shapes, right? Okay, this one you'll see it comes from about there, and this one comes from there. And this one you'll see it mostly. And that one maybe not as much. Okay. Okay, so there's your basic shape. And now you can embellish however you feel led to embellish. I am feeling led to make... this line here a little bit fatter this way just a little bit like that so I'm going to do that with all of them This one a little bit on this side.
Yeah, I like that. Okay. Do you wish they would call me for my glasses? Feeling like now that I know I'm getting new glasses, I'm really more conscious of the fact that these glasses are not quite right. I just have to fiddle with them a little bit. I have to pull them a little bit further down my nose for them to be in focus. But then I have to push them up a little bit. I don't know. Something's not quite right with them. <sighs> but I've known that for a while. Now that I have insurance again, I can afford new glasses. Those glasses are incredibly expensive. I don't know. I'm sure that there are other places to go besides my particular eye doctor where I might be able to get a little bit cheaper. I probably could go to the, the eye doctors that are attached to the Sam's Club or the Walmart and that'll be cheaper um, but I've been going to this eye doctor for I don't know 20 years 30 25 years a long time I've been going to this eye, eye doctor probably 20 years oh goodness sakes anybody in Minnesota. Well, I take it back. I do know somebody in Minnesota, but I don't know anybody in Minnesota who would have my cell phone number. They should all have just my home phone number. So, hopefully they will leave a message if they actually know who I am. Otherwise, it's just a missed call. Lots of wrong numbers. We get lots of the wrong numbers. I am assuming you do too. All right. I like that with that little bit of extra right there. And then I think I'm gonna do this variation that Ina shows. <clears throat> over here and go this way. From this to here. Like that. Really like that. Okay. It's going to be four. I was helping my grandniece out with a, a homework thing, um, genealogy, um, and one of the questions was interesting. Um, they wanted to know, you know, who was the first person. Uh, in your family to come from another country to the United States because eventually if you can go back far enough in your genealogy most people unless you you are indigenous uh, American Indian um, most people can trace their lineage to some other country not everybody but most people 
um, assuming you know your genealogy, which a lot of people don't. A lot of people only know their heritage to their grandparents or maybe their great-grandparents, but not any further back than that. Um, and what they wanted to know, though, is why did that ancestor of yours come to the United States? And I'm not sure, that unless you are uh, an immigrant, a recent immigrant, and it's either your parents or your direct grandparents, and they're still alive and you can ask them, most of these kids aren't going to be able to answer that question. Um, for my grandniece, the furthest back I could get is um, one of her ancestors uh, on my husband's side. Uh, yeah, um, they came over in the 1700s. I don't know why they came. I don't know if they had uh, religious persecution. I don't know if there was um, war or, you know, strife in where they came from. Um, I suppose I could look up the history of of, uh, of the Netherlands in the 1700s and find out you know what exactly was going on but that's a long long time ago I have no idea why they came to the United States But a lot of people can't even go back that far. The only reason that we have this information is that my mother loves genealogy, loves all that research, and has done a ton of it, not only on my side of the family, but she has re researched my husband's side of the family. And on one branch of the family tree, on my husband's side of the family, she has managed to Trace his lineage. Oh, bother. I'm just not having a good day today. <laughs> oh, golly. I just opened my pencil sharpener the wrong way, and all the little pencil shavings just went everywhere. <clears throat> now I have a mess to clean up, but oh well. That's life, I think. It's very colorful. I broke my pencil. I'm just having one of those days. Something's not right with this pencil. Maybe I need to empty it. Perhaps that's why it spilled all over me because it needs to be emptied. All right. Um, yeah, my, my mom managed to trace my husband's side of the family. Uh, all the way back to the 1500s in the Netherlands. And there are some names that I'm not even going to attempt to uh, pronounce with lots of consonants and not a whole lot of vowels. I think that's pretty amazing that she was able to get that much information going that far back. That that's I I find that fascinating. Um, my mom and my aunt have written several books about our family, um, and the family tree, and they're just. What they've managed to find out is just, I don't know how they did it. But unless you have direct information about, you know, their life, like, 
like correspondence or something. You don't know why they did what they did. You don't know much about who they were as people. You just know facts about, you know, when did they come to this country? When were they born? Where were they born? But you don't know that nitty gritty of their life, you know. Maybe some people don't care, but I think it's interesting to know, you know, which is one of the reasons why my mom decided to do these books. She wrote a book about her mom and she wrote a book about her dad and the memories she has of them. Um, my aunt and my, my mom did this together. Um, they wrote a book about their grandparents and the memories they have of that and, you know, when they moved different places and what they did for a living and and the things that they remember about them and without that I wouldn't know because these are people that I never met or if I did meet them I was you know really small and I don't recall remember them so I don't know much about them but um you know my mom and my aunt decided that th this was a legacy they, they wanted to um, preserve. And I am so grateful for that. So she wants us to each sit down and kind of do that for ourselves. And she's, she's written a story about herself and her memories and things. Um, My aunt has chosen not to do that for herself, which I think is an interesting choice since <clears throat> I think my aunt has decided that, that there are people that she would make stories about that are still alive. And um, so she's chosen that, that she's not going to share those stories until those people have passed. And I, and I respect that. I do. Um, and there are parts of my mom's life that she's respecting my aunt's uh, request not to share or perhaps write them down and not share them until after she's passed. That's fine. Um, I get it. Um, but like on my husband's side of the family, now both his mother and his father have passed and my mom would like us to sit down and write just a, not a lot, but just a little bit like what did they do for a living and, and when did they decide to do that? And if, if we know about, um, you know, some life choices that they made about, you know, how they felt. I mean, my, my in-laws, they lived in the same house. It's, it's, it was the one and only house they ever bought together and they lived in it their whole lives together. Um, you know, and up until they both have passed and we, um, had to sell the home, that was the family home f from the early 50s. That's a long time, and how they felt about the neighbors and the neighborhood and, you know, life. Life was different then. Um, they actually have, right now, one set of neighbors that are still living there from back then. Everybody else is now different and have moved and or passed on and and the neighborhood has changed and, and it's not a bad thing, it just is. But, um, sorry, I've got to move this pile of shavings because it's right where I want to stick my hand. I gotta scoop that up. Okay, see, I made a mess. 
I need to make this a little darker. I think I, I thought I was fine till I looked up at the screen and decided, nope, that needs to be darker. And that's one way you can do that. You, if you're not too sure about your shading, you, know, you can start with it not so bold and then decide you, you want to come back and make it darker. And that's okay. It's easy to do. But anyway, um, you know, my mom wants us to write these stories down before we forget. And so that um, our children or their children or their children after that um, will have this record Because um, unless you happen to, you know, be the the granddaughter, the great granddaughter of someone who kept a journal, and and that it was passed down from family member to family member, you won't have these stories, you know. So I guess it's important. I don't I don't feel like I'm much of a journalist, so uh, it will take a, a, a concerted effort to do this. But I believe that, that it's important and I really should sit down and, and do some of these things for the kids. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that one. Thanks, Ina, for this. I'm I'm having a great old time. All right, what was this called? It was called Dragon Tail. I can see that. I can see that inspiration. Um, how do I want it to live? I want it to live like that. Do I want it to live like that? I like that way. No. I'm gonna go either this way or this way. I think that way. All right. I rambled on about genealogy and stuff, but you know, I think these kinds of things are important. It's important to. Um, to know where you came from, to know how important your family is to each other. Very, very, very good thing to have, I think. So if you don't know your lineage, where you come from, where, you're, where you've been, um, you know, ask those questions, especially to your um, parents or your grandparents if they're still here. Um, those little day-to-day -day things that you may not think about, um, ask them these questions. You know, why did they come to this to the United States? Why did they move from where they grew up? Um, you know, if they if they stayed in one place, why did they move when they uh, got married or, or decided to go to college or whatever? If they were people who moved frequently. Uh, what was that about? Was it a job? Was it military? Was it, was it uh, you know, just lifestyle changes? Economic? Interesting, interesting things. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Even with my own mother, she moved all the way across the country when... Uh, she and my dad got married, and I'm not exactly sure what prompted that. <clears throat> and then after my mom and my dad got divorced, my dad moved back, back across the country, and my mom chose to stay here, and I don't know what prompted that either. So, you know, those are interesting questions. I should actually ask that to my mother. All right, well, see what things happen? You just start chatting to yourself and 
the next thing you know, you've got a whole nother project. Okay, you guys have a great day. I will see you tomorrow. Um, do something nice for somebody today. Uh, write down your story so that um, others will know something about you. It doesn't have to be super personal. You know, your journal doesn't have to be like all about your deep, dark, most intimate feelings. It can just be something simple like, uh, you know, I moved from here to there and the reason why is because, you know, I had no choice. My parents were moving. You know, whatever. Um, doesn't have to be complicated, but just something so that your generation past you, the kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids, have something that they will learn something about you that they might not know otherwise. I'm going to do that. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.